So hey guys, welcome back to episode 3 of our Road to Glory on FIFA 21. And yes, so today, I'm not gonna lie, it's one of those episodes, the grind episodes. Yeah, they're just, you know, it's just gonna have to happen sometimes. You can't just expect to always have, you know, Division Rivals gameplay or like Weekend League gameplay or like, you know, rewards. Yeah, this is the nit nitty gritty stuff in between, essentially. The stuff that nobody really likes to do, but you just have to do if you want to keep going. So, essentially in this episode, what we're doing is we're just guess, continuing sniping. We did a couple snipes on two main players, Nicholas Schulz and Ollie Watkins again. And I'm going to give you a small, I guess, insight on how I see things when I'm sniping. So, like I said before, sniping uh, players then that are in positions that are quite, I guess, like low competitively, as in like, let's say a left back that has not many other like cards that can substitute it. And if there's one or two that clearly stand out, I think those are decent players to snipe because I believe that they will go up for Weekend League. So I think um, with Weekend League being next week after the game releases, you still have time for player prices to go back up. They're probably going to dip a bit with everybody joining in and packs being released, but I think um, um, the market will recover nicely. But yeah, so my thought process um, for Schultz is I'm thinking about top five leagues, like leagues that people will use. And this year, I think, honestly, there will be a wider range of leagues being used than previous FIFAs. Because I think most previous FIFAs were always like the Prem. And then you find some way to like uh, mix up different leagues to get like Neymar or Mbappe up front with Cam. Or using icons and stuff like that late game. But at the start of the game, I think you'll see a lot of different leagues because this year is actually pretty interesting with like the decent players across every single division. Not division, but league. And so my thought process with Nicholas Schulz, I'm trying to think of pacey um, wingers because I think this game right now is all about pace and acceleration. At least that's what's really been doing the big difference for me. And I'm trying to think of wingers that have a lot of hype from like a move they made. And so number one that came up to me was uh, Sané because especially with um, Bayern just winning the Champions League, you know, Sané's big like dramatic transfer from Manchester City to Bayern and like um, I think Bayern honestly has been getting a lot of attention, especially with like how they, I guess, massacred Nabry's pace. So I think um, like it'll be like in the headlines for most of the people. So I think it's a good team to invest in and like a decent um, player to use, Sane. So what I was thinking about Sane, I'm like most people that are playing right now will probably run like the classics 4 through 3 or 4 1 2 1 2, like narrow, so those don't really affect Sane. But like as a left winger, you might want like a strong link to your left back or like a 4-4-2 or like a 4-5-1 I've seen a couple people use. Like you want to isolate that left back and left wing or left mid to get a strong link and then you're done it's essentially with Cam. You can, you know, divert yourself into a different league. Um, I've seen a couple of these squads with like Bundesliga left back and left mid and then diverting into let's say a Prem with like, you know, like a strong link in the back and then like your, your midfielder is strong linking with them or like your strikers. So it's not too much of a problem if you can just isolate those individual links. So Sané. What are his strong links? Alfonso Davies, or essentially, I think, Halsenberg, but he's a little too slow, I think, this game. And he's not going to like match the competition of like Alfonso Davies or Scholes. And when I was looking at the prices of Alfonso Davies, he is expensive. Very, very expensive. And harder to link. So essentially, your only options with Alfonso Davies is to do that isolation left side, which is okay. If, I mean, if that's what you want to do, fair enough. But otherwise, if you want more options and more flexibility in your squads... Nicholas Schulz could be a decent option. He gives you that strong link, essentially from League and Nation, and um, he's essentially quite good. He's fast. He's always been consistent. Even last FIFA, he was quite good, and acceleration is pretty decent. So I think I invested in him, thinking that most people will find him as an like alternative in weekend league rather than you know paying up front Alfonso Davies because I don't think many people will be able to afford him at the start of the game. At least those who grind and like you know not necessarily those who like pay to win but then again that's what you're gonna come up on weekend leagues so yeah so um that's my reason why i invented invested in shoals his price is going down yes but i still picked him up i think for uh, i think 1k over what his price is right now like i'm taking a bit of an l for now but i think by possibly thursday next thursday when weekend league starts i think his price should rise a bit so my next player i also um I guess sniped a couple times was Ollie Watkins, but this is nothing new. I've always sniped Ollie Watkins, like I said in the past, he's a really good starting striker, he's a decent player, and I think a lot of players will be wanting to invest in him early on and use him as an initial striker because the Prem is always one of the most popular leagues and most commonly used, so um, I guess demand shouldn't be too much of a problem. 
And um, another big, inf- big thing, like a big reason why I invested in Ollie Watkins, is the fact that he has an inform, an inform card in Team of the Week too. So first of all, okay, I'm pretty sure most people watched that game. At least those like you know diehard FIFA fans will probably would have watched Aston Villa versus Liverpool, or at least the highlights, you know, of them dismantling the reigning champions. So I think Ollie Watkins is a name that's going to be on everybody's. Uh, mind so I think you know it's not gonna be one of those where like oh you search up a player on the transfer market oh this guy looks decent let me actually go further look into him I think it's a card that people will actually search up to find information with, rather than just you know call upon once you're you know, searching but yeah so the fact that he has an inform means that gold card will not be released or not packable what that means is limited amount of supply and demand just increases because of the amount of people joining so I think, although his prices right now are literally plummeting from, I think, he, he's currently around 1.2, he jumped up to 1.7, and now he's back down to around 1k. I've been sniping him for about 1.2, 1.1, and I picked up a couple at 850 and stuff like that. But I think that he will go up. I, I'm pretty sure he will go up. He has to go up, because name me another starting striker that's quite cheap and affordable. You got, what, Antonio, but that's even 4 to 5k. I'm not sure many people want to spend that much at the start. And then you have other players like Tammy Abraham, but then he's like more like I guess he's not like lean fast and like you know just like agile as like Ollie Watkins and I just think Ollie Watkins is a decent player and I think many people want to use him at the start which is why I've actually invested in I think 15 15 um, versions of him in the transfer pile I don't know something like that but yeah so my point is basically invest in players that um, are gonna be used early on and if they have an inform, even better, because that card's going to be limited and there's going to be higher demand. But yeah, so, um, as you can see, before this um, sniping phase, I was looking at the season objectives and the season, I guess, object rewards and stuff like that that you can complete. The one that gives you um, three different players that you can pick up um, at the end of level 30. And three players are Lacazette, Sabitzer, and Juan Bernat. If I'm being honest, I probably think most people will pick Sabitzer. I don't think Lacazette is necessarily that good of an option. I think there's already decent players that are 81, 82, 83, or even like towards 85 rated that are already better than that card. Yes, it's a it's a decent upgrade but and a decent link, I guess, but like Lacazette's never really been meta since what FIFA 18, I think, when he had his first transfer card to Arsenal. But yeah, so Lacazette's not really in my radar. For me, it's most likely gonna be Sabitzer. Although it's not a league I use, it's it's a good player. He, he looks really good. He could be a super sub that you bring on. And then, you know, I guess, yes, you're going to probably wonder, like, French League, why don't you take Juan Bernat with not many left backs being decent? That, that is true. If I stick with League 1, I could potentially take Juan Bernat, but we'll see. We'll see how things go. Juan Bernat um, has been a decent player for me, especially in, like, career modes. I actually enjoy him quite a lot. I use him as a, as a essentially a rotation player because he's always been decent for me in game with, I think, four star skill moves, which I hope he still has. But yeah, um, we'll see when we get to level 30. Right now, we're still like around level six or seven, so we still have quite the journey to grind. But oh well, you know, it's all part of the game. <clears throat> so right now, what you can see, we did a little bit of, um, before this, we did a little bit of the three nation um, league uh, challenge, I guess, for friendlies, because this gives you decent rewards, especially in the first week. But also, um, a big thing they're gonna do this year, I believe, is they're gonna release players that you can unlock during objectives for these type of friendly games. So you could, you know, f- pick up a nice storyline player or like League SBC players. I'm, I'm not sure if I read that correctly or somewhere before. But yeah, potentially we might see, you know, what EA does. But could be good, good players you could pick up easily for free. So you know, make sure you're on the lookout for those type of challenges. As you know, who doesn't like free players that are hopefully somewhat decent. But yeah, so um, a quick heads up for next episode. Next episode, we will be picking up Sandro Tonali, potentially. We are currently looking (laughs) to see if we have the funds, but I don't really want to stop investing. So I'm literally picking up stuff that I have and tradable on the side. But yeah, so um, Sandro Tonali, I think for currently what, around 10, 11K, probably really worth it. If you give him an upgrade, he's going to (laughs) be... What, C77 right now is going to go up to like an 81, I think, or 80, 81, 80, 81 then to 83 or 84. And I think with uh, him playing in the Serie A, decent league, he's probably going to get a lot of playtime in AC Milan because AC Milan's midfield is not essentially that strong as it's been in the past. 
And I think um, with, I guess, I think AC Milan's a team that gets quite a lot of hype in general, whether it's like off FIFA with like, you know, Ibrahimovic obviously being like, you know, <laughs> grabbing attention on the media, like constantly with whether it's his amazing performances at the age of like 38, 39, or his like, I guess, cockiness, if you want to say. But honestly, Ibra is an absolute legend and one of my favorite players of all time. And I just think people love him and I guess people really like AC Milan as a whole. It's been like, it's a historically prestigious club. So I don't see why people would like look down at them and not use some of their players. Because they've got uh, decent players at the back with Fra Magnoli and like, uh, who's their goalie? Donnarumma, which are quite good players on the game, especially last year's Fra Magnoli scream card, which was <laughs> used in many people's squads. But yeah, with Sandro Tonali, like, Another big tip is if you're looking for players to invest in, take a look at um, SBCs. Because whether it's marquee matchups, uh, basically like I think the nation challenges and all that, um, people will focus on, like those people who actually try to get as many rewards, as many like potential coins, like really trying to maximize their profits and I guess gains, will look into those SBCs. So try to pick up a couple players that you might think. Um, will fit into the SVC, whether it's a nation one, for instance, it's, it's, it's a Sandro Tonali, like, I didn't actually look at the requirements, but let's say it's Serie A players or, like, Italian players. Those those guys are going to inflate. So I think um, if you know, like, uh, let's say, for example, for um, players of the month, if you know, like, for example, I think this month is probably going to be Calvert Lewin. So I would hold on to a lot of, like, English midfielders, possibly an Evertonian, because that could, you know, go up in price. You know, these type of things you can read into when investing in different cards, and it's always pretty useful to, I guess, <laughs> shift the system a bit to your side. But yeah, so um, as you can see, we're doing a lot of squad builders, squad battles to also like try to figure out a formation that I enjoy. I've been messing around with a lot of custom tactics, and especially in games where I'm losing quite a bit, I'll be changing formations every single minute, because for me, like, this early on, I don't actually really care about my record. I've never really cared about my record. I don't think the record's really a sign of how well you play because you can easily dominate a game and then you don't lose to one counterattack and that's it. Like That counts as an L on your scoreboard, but you dominate. So for me, like the record doesn't really mean anything. So even throughout the whole series, we'll probably get a lot of, lot of Ls, but oh well, you know, we're trying to improve our own gameplay and yeah, I could easily just improve my uh, record by just, you know, grinding up squad battles on professional or even beginner if I really wanted to and just get like 500 wins and something like that but you know what's the what's the fun in that we're trying to improve our players for our own benefit and improve our play style for our own benefit like it's just a game it's for fun okay so yeah so um key things in this episode and in the next one we're really trying to I guess find information that works because everything that I've used in the past whether it's FIFA 20 FIFA 19 the 41212 Four two three one. I've never really used in FIFA 20, 20 but I haven't given a shot yet in FIFA twenty one. Four three three four doesn't really work for me too. I'm way too exposed at the back, so it's 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 quite a struggle. It's it's hard to find a formation I'm you know confident in. My right now my finishing is, eh, it's not great unless it's a fast break. Then I get a you know a clear shot, but otherwise like creating opportunities, I find it quite hard. And I don't know if it's the players I'm using, whether it's you know me not really knowing. How they work yet and like the work rates and stuff like that but i still need to figure out custom tactics that really fit my play style secondly um so attack is i guess an issue that's it's all right like you know it really depends on how you play essentially but defending oh my lord defending in this game is literally atrocious right now and this is the problem i have if you're let's say uh decent to like really good FIFA player in FIFA 20 and 19, 18, like manual defending has always been around and those players who are really good at that are gonna strive early on in FIFA 21. Cause manual defending is essentially the only thing you can do cause AI defending is literally useless. If you, you can't use the FIFA 19 tactic of controlling your midfielder to just essentially try get the ball and allow your backline to just hold them off. It's literally impossible because your backline's just staggering around the back. The moment that striker or winger gets parallel to your Defense, it's over. He's gonna send that through a ball and then you're gonna be dead. He's gonna eat you on a counter attack and it's over. But yeah, so um, I'm still trying to figure out essentially my play style. And then hopefully that patch for defending comes up before weekly because otherwise it's gonna be hell. But otherwise, next episode, you guys better look forward to it because it's our division placement matches. 
And that's really important this year with the amount of gold coins you can get and all that. So be sure to join and honestly, everybody stay safe.